What's going on guys? I got another Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch for you guys here today. Haven't done one in a little over a week and a half and I thought today would be great to do it just because not only did we get changes yesterday uh, by Konami for the official end of round procedures but we also got a ban list earlier this week and that kind of shook some of the things up in the meta as well as kind of just uh, changed up some things in the market. So today's a great opportunity to kind of talk about some cards. I'm not going to talk about every card but I have about like maybe 10 cards here that I kind of want to give you guys, uh, put on you guys' radar. Uh, obviously, first and foremost being Trickstar Reincarnation. So if at the end of this video you guys happen to enjoy it, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below some cards uh, that maybe I missed and you guys would like me to talk about in the coming days or next week. Maybe I'll do these like every Friday or so, um, just because that's like a good wrap-up for the end of the week. Uh, anyways, let's get into it. First and foremost, we have Trickstar Reincarnation. So as most of you guys know, this card was not hit by the ban list. A lot of people predicted it was going to go to 1. With that said, though, this card was still hovering around the twenty to twenty, or excuse me, twenty-five to twenty-seven dollar price point. It went up to around thirty-ish or so, thirty-one, thirty-two dollars. And then, as of yesterday, after the ban list, or not the ban list, excuse me, the end of round procedures rule change dropped by Konami, this card overnight quickly shot up. And as you can see, it's now uh, bare minimum first eds are thirty fives. And then quickly, quickly after these three are gone, first eds, they immediately go up to $40 and then as high as $50. Now, I don't think anyone uh, should be paying this. I think even $40 is too much. Honestly, $35, in my opinion, if you really, really want to play the deck and you have nothing else, uh, I personally would not invest into this card. I don't think the deck is that great. The reason why people jumped at the opportunity to pick this card up is they anticipated everyone else wanting trick stars for the sake of time now uh one of the big things with trick stars is and as i mentioned with the end of round procedures if you guys saw my video yesterday now since there's no end of round uh for, for your end of round there's no turns uh if time is called when you're in a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh match uh, at any tier two event or higher so regionals ycs nationals etc if time is called uh, the turn player who's turn it on, as soon as they finish the phase that they're on, that's the game. You get no extra turns unless you're in top cut. That means decks like Trick Stars that go to time are going to have a significant advantage because they're not actively dealing you any damage. They're passively dealing you damage because of their card effects. And something like Trick Star Reincarnation is obviously a big complement to the deck like this. It's obviously one of the big centerpieces. And that's why a lot of people went after this card. Now, despite uh, a lot of people's thinking being very solid about this, I still think that Trick Stars are very, very weak across the board. I think the deck is probably going to lose much faster in most cases before you even reach time. The deck is a deck that still struggles unless you have Scapegoat or something like Eater of Millions to deal with the basic attack threshold. So I don't think that this is a very warranted uh, price tag. I personally would not invest into it at this point. I think it's too late. And the only reason I'm letting you guys now know is I had one card, a single card listed on my TCG player last night. And as of like 6 or 7 o'clock this morning... Uh, it actually sold for thirty-one fifty, so I'm still gonna honor that. I'm not one of those like people that's gonna be like scummy and you know try to you know cancel the order and then you know try and relist it for like forty bucks. Like I, I just think that's scummy. So um, another thing is also keep in mind that right now there's a five percent kickback going on TCG Player, so inherently all the prices of cards, even those that are not necessarily targeted by uh, buyouts or go up naturally, uh, those cards are artificially or not excuse me artificially but naturally go going to appreciate in value uh, across the board. And that's just because sellers, they know you're getting a percentage of the money back so they can charge you more comfortably. They make a little bit more and you still pay a little more, but you get more in return. You get that 5% difference. So instead of paying, you know, let's say uh, $20 for a card, you might be paying $22 for a card and that seller makes a little more, but you still get your 5% kickback. So you're still paying less than $20. So um, I mean, it, obviously it varies on the card. That's probably not the best example, but nonetheless, Trickstar Reincarnation, I'd probably stay away from it. If you have these, I would immediately sell them and list them. I don't think it's a very good buyout just because of the end of round procedures. Um, next we have Firewall Dragon. This card has been steadily climbing. I sold a couple, uh, last week, unfortunately, uh, I didn't want to risk, uh, the ban list. I didn't think it was necessarily going to get hit just because it was a main show card. But with that being said, uh, Firewalls Unlimited are 40s, First Eds are 40s. They're 40s across the board. This is a really powerful card. Arguably the most powerful Link monster right now. Any degenerate Link strategy um, other than Nightmares, if you're just exclusively using the Nightmares, which also work in tandem with this card, uh, can take full advantage of Firewall Dragon. If you've noticed every degenerate loop deck, I mean, whether it's the Spiral deck right now or uh, just really any deck for that matter that includes Firewall Dragon that can abuse this card, 
uh, needs this card. Like you need, it's a one of for a reason. Uh, this card is extremely powerful. If you don't have this card, uh, I, I would encourage you if you're playing a deck that requires it to get it, but I don't think right now is a very good entry point just because right now, keep in mind, again, we have the 5% kickback. Also, we're going into national season. People are much more tempted to splurge, even if a card is already confirmed for a buyout, even if a, or not a buyout, excuse me, for a reprint, even if a card is, you know, destined to be hit on the list one day. Uh, people during national season have deep pockets. They're willing to spend more because this is the season that matters. People either that are scurrying last minute for their invites and want to go to nationals and they really want to be able to participate in that top-notch event, they're willing to pay these higher values even at the risk of a reprint, um, especially for something like Firewall. Um, this card is very powerful. If you have excess copies of this card, I think I have like two more. I'll probably list them at this point. Um, I would encourage you guys to sell them. I'll probably be listing um, a first ed and an unlimited very soon. So if you guys see my listing on here, my TCG player is uh, Twiz on YouTube. You guys will you know, see it. It's all lowercase. Um, feel free to snag those if you guys are interested. Uh, but with that being said, Firewall Dragon, I would encourage you guys to list these if you have extras of them. If you don't have them and you don't plan on entering any top-notch events right now where you need this card, um, probably don't pick it up because nonetheless, it, of course, it is getting a reprint. Um, however, with that being said, if you do need it, you're probably going to be having to shell out you know, $40 plus probably, um, and in some case in trade if you're picking it up locally. And excuse me, I'm, I'm kind of coming down on something. <laughs> Next, we have one for one, specifically the Ultra Rare from Legendary Correction 5Ds. I heard about this. I think this is insane. Uh, light played $25, first ed near mints coming in at 50, and a random first edition listed at 999. These are just troll prices. No one's actually going to be paying $50 for an Ultra Rare one for one. No one's going to be paying $1,000 for an Ultra Rare one for one. And even if you're paying, you're even if you have this money, even if you're Bill Gates, even if you have like if you're like the Shah of Iran or whatever, like please don't pay $25 for an ultra rare one for one. There's super rare alternatives. There's star foil alternatives. There's common alternatives. There's rare alternatives. There's tons of printings of this card if you need to play it. Don't pay this much. Like this is ridiculous. Like even at a at a nine uh, at a nine dollar price point market price, this is ridiculous. This is obviously just someone trying to inflate the value of this card because it's ultra rare. It's a great card being used in several decks. I mean, spirals and just, I'm not sure if Brandish plays it. I don't think Brandish uses it. I don't think the, I think the chick, the main chick that they use is level four. So I don't think they use it, but I'm sure there's other decks that utilize this card. I don't think that's warranted. I'm sorry, but don't pick up one for ones for this value. There's, there's nothing else I can tell you guys. Like if at this point you guys don't know to not pick up cards like this, like if you have it, List it for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Like, I'm sure it'll sell. Someone's going to be like, oh my God, I'm going to make that $10, $15 profit by buying it for 10, 15 bucks uh, and listing it for like 30. And then someone will buy it. Well, someone's probably not going to buy it first and foremost. If you have it, list it right now, regardless. Because there'll be that person that's, that's interested in trying to do that. Next, we have scapegoats. Now, uh, scapegoats overall haven't necessarily appreciated in value. Um, if you look at secret rares, they have like a market price of about $11 or at like 12s right now. Uh, hobby leagues around the same thing they're around 12s uh, all the other ones we're not really going to look at the supers or all the you know rares and whatnot duelist league there's tons of printings of scapegoats obviously the retro pack ones are always you know several hundred dollars um my favorite ones are obviously the french ones but scapegoat overall this is another card that evaded the ban list um and i think it's kind of interesting that this is one of the few cards especially the lower printings for affordable players uh, you know for players that want to be able to afford these cards haven't shot up more because I feel that this is a card that is just so dynamic. Uh, it's very splashable. Like even you could even play this card in decks where it's not really good or needed, and you would still get a lot of value out of utilizing this card. I think it's just so powerful um, across the board, and I'm kind of surprised that both the Hobby League and the Secret Rares, but more so the Secret Rares, because people are more hesitant to use Hobby Leagues now, particularly in competitive play. Um, they don't want to risk getting a Hobby League card and then having a judge tell them, you know, we're not okay with using a Hobby League card because it's, you know, it's warped or, um, you know, it, it's a lot thicker and you can see it and it's considered marked uh, in your deck. Um, but with that being said, I think the Secret Rares, um, both in terms of collectability for something like GOAT format, um, but also just for using it, if you're, you know, if you're not trying to splurge several hundred dollars for the French ones or, you know, any of the retro pack ones, uh, these are great alternatives. They look nice. Um, they're super rares, of course. I think the secret rares are probably the next best, you know, visual rarity. Um, I, I honestly, I could see if Scapegoat starts taking off in a lot more decks, not necessarily just like Trick Stars, 
Um, I don't think it's necessary. Like you don't need it in, in spirals. You don't need it in brandish. You don't need it in a lot of these decks, but a lot of the lower tier decks out there, it's one of the very few power cards that they can take full advantage of that allows them to access link monsters in a very free way, but at the same time also have a real defensive presence that if their opponent doesn't clear, you're going to be able to potentially make a comeback play in any shape or form. So um, I can see this card potentially going up to like 15 bucks initially, uh, maybe not more than that, but it's just something that I want to throw out there because, again, it's a card that evaded the ban list. I don't understand why people... Uh, didn't necessarily just hop right on it. That was just my initial impression that as soon as this card didn't get hit, I'm like, oh, great. Now people are just going to want to be splurging on scapegoats. They probably listed a bunch of theirs before the list in anticipation of it going to one or maybe even getting banned. Next, I have a slew of hand traps I want to discuss. Um, hand traps overall, I think right now, are going to be extremely popular, again, especially when Sky Strikers, a.k.a. Brandish, come out. Um, Drone Lock probably being one of the best ones along with Winter Cherries. Uh, Drone Lockbird, if you look at them across the board, they're all holding, like if you look at the Ultra Rares, they're almost $12. Super Rares are about $14s. And then the original Rares are about $10, $11. Um, if you're looking to pick up a Hollow Rarity, just pick up the Ultras. Um, and if you really have a couple extra dollars, just get the Supers. I think these will hold better long-term value because it is an OTS pack card. Um, I know a lot of people like the Ultras, but... Um, I just, I personally like supers. It's my favorite rarity. Uh, I could easily see Drone Lockbird uh, overall being a $15, $20 card again if it's used in a lot of, uh, in almost every deck, uh, particularly for Brandish. If you just roll them, it really just ends their turn, even if you're not resolving Winter Cherries. Um, it just ends their turn completely. It's great against any of the decks utilizing Nightmares because they get, can't get the full value out of their draws. Um, from the Nightmares, they also can't do all their searching. Uh, Gokis are basically get halted by this if you happen to decide to main deck this. It's not the greatest against that deck, but it is something you can use against them. Um, basically, just halt their searches. They can't just um, basically snowball all their monsters, use two Gokis, make a Link monster like Isolde or whatever, and then use Isolde, get their two searches from their guys, use Goki rematch, do it all over again. Like They, they can't do all that. It can't snowball. It's kind of like Geargy is in a lot of ways. I, I compare a lot of decks to the snowball effect that that deck had. Um, but Drone Lockbird is a card I could easily see going up to $15, $20, particularly for the higher rarity ones, um, just by the merit of what decks do these days. Winter Cherries as well. This has kind of gone up a couple dollars from what I've seen. It was like three fours, um, as low as twos a couple days ago. Um, this card is particularly going to be used against Brandish, aka Sky Strikers. You can basically just get one of their, um, one or two of their extra deck monsters when it comes out out of Dark Saviors and just run three Winter Cherries and basically just hit them and that kind of just destroys their deck. Um, a lot of people, I mean, I don't really know too many other decks that you can really hit with this right now. Um, a lot, I don't see a lot of people running Electrums right now because Pendulums kind of got hit and a lot of people aren't running them. Um, Spirals, I guess you could hit Double Helix, uh, if it continues to be a thing, but honestly, they don't even need Double Helix in most cases with the Nightmare variants of the deck. Um, but this is really just going to be the focal point of people getting this card mostly because of Brandish and Sky Strikers. So if you don't have your set... Um, I would consider picking it up right now on the off chance that it goes up to like seven, eight, nine dollars. Uh, again, you never know. If you don't have this at this point, you should probably just be picking up generic cards like this and always have them at your arsenal and just don't get rid of them. Just because it's no, there's no reason for you to risk having a volatile market. Cards going up and down. Like, like I said, like look at Trickstar Reincarnation. The market changes constantly. Like I could have potentially held this card off for the buyout in anticipation because I knew I was supposed to take it off the market yesterday. Just because I knew people were going to go off to Trick Stars, and this is obviously a main focal point card as a result of the end of turn rules that they could be interested in. And I didn't do that because I totally brain farted on doing that. But that's, that doesn't mean like cards like this are necessarily going to retain that value. They're probably going to plummet once people realize it's not that great. So um, Hand Traps overall, I think it's just something you should always have in your arsenal, particularly something like Winter Cherries, despite it probably being one of my least favorite Hand Traps. Um, and then the final Hand Trap I really want to highlight is Ash Blossom. Um, I know some people were even talking about this card, maybe even getting hit on the list. I obviously, I didn't expect that at any, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. I think they, they are still, Konami could very easily reprint this card again in the future in any random set and have it be a money card, maybe as a super rare, um, or obviously a secret rare in the tins, uh, coming out later this year, uh, next year, or excuse me, this year, not next year, excuse me. Um, I don't, I don't think Maximum Crisis is going to be part of that. Um, I think it's past the maximum crisis point, but like they could easily just reprint it in any reprint set. Um, the next battle is a legend or whatever. Like whatever set could have this, it's easy. It, it's a great card, and it's a great card in the sense that it is a magnet for players to try and purchase that set that don't have access to this card. Because uh, we're looking at the legendary collection Kaibas. They went up easily from 40s, mid 40s to 55 dollars, 
and we're seeing the sick the the secrets be a bare minimum for unlimited for sixty two dollars and first ed's almost at sixty five so um if you have excess ash blossoms i think is a great time to sell them right now um i think particularly like i have a bunch of legendary collection kaiba that i'm probably going to crack open i might do a video on that if you guys would like to see it let me know um i have a bunch of them that i want to crack open honestly just to pull this and just to sell them just because um it's a great card i think right now it's going to stabilize at this value i don't think it's necessarily going to plummet anytime soon uh in the next couple weeks with new jersey and just all the regionals and whatnot going on a lot of the re uh, nationals going on in other countries um that's something to keep in mind as well and then eventually with euros uh coming up it's just this is a great time to be selling cards. I think if you have cards like these in excess and you just aren't going to be playing or going to these events, I would probably consider listing them, particularly the secret rares. Um, obviously, the ultras, if you have them as well, list those. Um, I just want to let you guys know that these cards are on the rise. Um, and again, keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, 5% kickback on everything. Next card, just like Trickstar Reincarnation, we have Ultimate Rare Gaga Ga, Ga Cowboy. Despite all the tons of printings, rares, supers, golds of Gaga Cowboy yesterday, and I even mentioned this in my video that cards like Cowboy are kind of crazy now, I could really see like this having a little bit of merit to it where players consider running one of these in their extra deck just for time uh, on the off chance that time is called during their main phase one. Uh, and it's like game three in time and let's say you just started the duel and you have nothing else to do and you don't you, you don't get a battle phase, let's say you're still main phase one. Well, you just make Cowboy and just burn your opponent for 800 if you're both at 8,000, and that's the game. Like, people, that's what people are anticipating. I could see that happen. Um, I don't know necessarily how frequent that'll happen, but it is something that it's on people's radars. This card shot up from about $13, $14. Last night, it was almost $50, $60. We're seeing it go as low as $30 for an Italian copy here, um, and $30, and then quickly going up to $42. I would probably stay away from cards like this. This is basically a hot potato um, if you have this and you don't mind getting rid of a collection card like this, feel free to list it. You might make some money off someone that is like, you know, I'd like to, I've always wanted an, an ultimate cowboy. It's an astral pack card. It's something that could have some merit to it. And I want to pick it up, go for it, list it. But if you don't need the money, don't bother listing it. It's a collection card. Um, I like to hold cards like this just for collection value, not necessarily because I care about them going up or down. Um, inevitably, I could see this card going down a little bit and then stabilizing. I don't see it going back down to that $13, $14 price point anytime soon because of the end of round procedure rules. There's always going to be someone wanting to play Cowboy. Um, but again, if you don't have this card, tons of printings for a dollar or less all over the place. So don't stress about it. You don't necessarily need to go um, scavenging for this card anywhere. Like You don't need to try and hustle people for this card. Um, it's just something that if you have on, on your mind and you're considering getting it, I wouldn't necessarily pick it up, but maybe wait till it drops a little bit. Um, it's still fresh in everybody's mind from the end of round procedures. Evenly matched, this has also been on my radar for a while. This card is kind of stabilized over the last several weeks. People anticipated, kind of like Ash Blossom, that there is some potential for this card getting hit on the list. Uh, it did not get hit. Um, thankfully, uh, I think this card is a great card overall for obvious reasons. I think it's a great out to a lot of the Nightmare boards, Goki boards, Spiral boards, if you can break their boards correctly if in conjunction with a lot of other cards um, after baiting out something like a Trigate, of course. Um, in most cases, I, I think right now what we're seeing is this card averaging for Unlimiteds uh, about $53, and then First Edge are about $55. So um, with National Season approaching, I think that almost every deck is, if they're not going to be maining it, they're probably going to be side decking three copies of this card. It's just a card you need. It's almost like Ash Blossom where you need it even if you're not necessarily going to be using it. It's not that great against every deck, but the decks that it's good against, it's really devastating against if you can time it correctly. I would encourage you guys, um, if you have this card in excess, much like Ash Blossom, um, list it. But I would probably wait until the next event passes just to see what some of the uh, you know the deviation the standard devi deviation of people using this card is in their main decks versus side decks and out of those people using those cards how many of those top cut decks actually utilize this card um, I could easily see this card maybe going up to sixty ish uh, or so again um, but probably not much more than that uh, I think it's just such a powerful card to out a lot of those powerful boards that we're going to be seeing in the coming uh, you know in the coming months and obviously without really any immediate reprint other than the the ten one later on this year. Um, I'm not sure what you know what people are going to be anticipating for this card. I, I, I feel this card much like uh, you know much like Cowboys, a little bit kind of like a hot potato, but I don't see it plummeting immediately. That's kind of the big thing with evenly matched. 
And then the final card is Brilliant Fusion, another card that some people anticipated that might get hit on the list if Konami really wanted to just, you know, not only destroy an engine, but also kind of deal with the FTK. They decided to hit Gem Knight Master Diamond instead of this, which I think is great. Uh, I like being able to splash this card in a lot of decks. Now, with that being said, uh, a lot of the 60 card decks with Grass being hit uh, took a hit, which means a lot of players that don't want to play those decks anymore, a lot of those players had Brilliant Fusion in their decks, regardless of what rarity it is. And that means that they could be wanting to list those cards on the market. However, a lot of people are forgetting that this is still a very splashable engine uh, outside of those decks. It's still a very powerful engine. You don't necessarily need to run it in, you know, an or uh, you know, Scorpio, Orphis, uh, 60 card, Dino, whatever dot deck. Like you don't necessarily need to play it in that deck. You could easily play it in a lot of other decks. Um, and it is a, a very relatively small engine. Honestly, if you really think about it, it's only a minimum of five cards in most cases. Um, so it's still a very powerful engine. I would not discount this card. I think uh, very easily we could we could easily see this $35 price point ultimate rare shoot up to $45, $50. Um, I could see it being kind of like ultimate rare solemn strike at one point where solemn strikes are easily like 55, 60s in some cases. Um, and it's just something that by merit of being a playable card, of, of being a potential engine card, uh, of being an extender, of being a starter card, it's just such a powerful card that I just don't see this card holding this price point, even if decks aren't necessarily using it right now in the immediate future in this top, in the you know in the top meta, because eventually some deck is going to use this card. And I think right now with the five percent kickback, I think it's a great opportunity to look at buying this card. I have two extra copies of the ultimates and like three extra supers, but despite having that, I am not going to list them right now. So that's something you guys uh, might be wanting to uh, keep in your in the back of your minds. I would wait a little bit. If you guys have copies of this card and list it right now, I think is a great time to consider picking these up and kind of just hoarding them and saving them until they appreciate a value because it's inevitable. Uh, we're not getting a list probably until September, October, uh, most likely. So that's something to keep on your mind. So uh, that's all the stuff I wanted to highlight for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys smash that like button, comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what cards I missed down below. Do you agree with some of these opinions? Do you disagree? Obviously, these are all just my opinions uh, as someone who likes to actively buy, sell, and trade for cards. Um, I like to kind of just stay on top of the market in most cases. Um, the Trickstar reincarnation was obviously a sad brain fart by me last night, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So, nonetheless, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another awesome video. I was going to upload a Mermail deck profile today, but I decided to skip out on that. I'm just going to upload that probably this weekend. If you guys want to see a Mermail deck profile, of course, updated for the May 2018 ban list, smash that like button. Comment, rate, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Patreon link down below. Uh, I got a surprise for you guys. If you guys end up backing me on Patreon, I'm going to do something for all the current patrons um, that probably future patrons aren't going to have. So I'm going to do a complete overhaul on that. If you guys think I should make a Discord or something like that, let me know. Uh, let me know what kind of awards you guys think I should give you guys. So see you guys. Take it easy.